the agenda for today, I'm going to try to keep things more focused on the model lesson. Uh, I'll, go, I'll be introducing the series of Let's Smile, letting you know what the components are. Uh, for those that know eFuture, kind of compare them to our other course books. And, you know, what, what does one course book cover that the other two, you know, doesn't really focus on and all of these kind of main focuses and features of each series. Uh, get into the components. Uh, I think I've mentioned said that already, but the components, what do we have prepared for you as teachers and for your students? And then go into the lesson flow. And after going into like, kind of the brief lesson flow, do the model lesson. So how I would teach it, how I would think about teaching the, the course book. And then hopefully uh, I've left some time for a Q&A. So hopefully if you guys do have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box or um, kind of save them to the end. I'll, I'll give some time, all right? So let's get into the introduction. So with eFuture, we have three course books. Uh, do you guys know the names of our other two course books? So we do have Let's Smile, which we'll all be covering today. But do you know the other two course books that eFuture has developed and created? One was said in chat earlier while I was kind of chit-chatting with you guys. But do you know what the other two titles of our course books are? So if you've been to some other webinars, you might have seen or heard some of the names. But I'm curious if you know what the two are. Any idea? Or if this is your first time, it's okay. You know, you'll kind of get your uh, introduction to some of our course books here. So our first course book that we developed was Smart English back in 2013. So this was our very first course book that we created. And then we have Hand in Hand. So this one was created in 2017. So kind of go over, these were our first two. And then recently we kind of uh, launched Let's Smile. Okay, so. We have three course books, but then you're kind of wondering, you know, what's the difference between the three, right? So let's go, kind of go over that. So going first about the book level. So if you know the CEFR and kind of all those uh, the frameworks and everything, uh, we have the, the level chart here. So if you look at Smart English, you see it kind of tops out at the flyers, you know, the kind of uh, lower A2 level. And then hand in hand kind of reaches that upper A2, right? So you can see just based on the, uh, the levels here, Smart English is kind of the easier, we'll have like the easier level, lower level uh, course book, and then hand in hand is a bit higher. Okay? So with Let's Smile, we're trying to kind of reach the middle ground essentially. So it is about the same level as Smart English, uh, but once I get into kind of the content and the focuses, that's where the differences kind of come in. So although it might be the level of Smart English, the content is about closer to hand in hand, all right? So looking at the components here of what we have in the series. So of course we have, oh, looks like a little bit of my text got really close together, but we do have the teacher's manual. Of course, you know, that's the kind of Bible of, you know, teaching, you know, what, we're, what we can do and what can, we can use for each lesson. Uh, eSmart class, which is our online kind of LMS, uh, LCMS uh, system. So, you know, you can access eBooks, you can access um, downloads and extra practice through there. Uh, workbooks, you know, standard workbook, extra practice for the students. We have the app with all the audio and video and then physical flashcards. So this is one of the big differences between hand in hand, let's smile and uh, smart English. Right? So we actually do have physical physical flashcards available for let's smile now as opposed to the other series where we have the flashcards downloadable, but then you would kind of have to create them yourself, which I kind of did before when I was a teacher. Okay, so we do have the physical flashcards available. So looking inside the teacher's manual, uh, so like I talked about, flashcards are separate, but the teacher's manual also includes CD with the ebook on it. So if you, you know, internet access isn't as strong, you know, you can access the ebook through the CD as well as worksheets, tests, 
lesson plans, all of that included in the teacher's manual, right? So keep going through. So looking at the sample lesson plan. So this is the lesson we're going to be focusing on today and I will be doing uh, my model lesson on later. So shows you all of the kind of previewing the pages, shows you kind of the instructions for each of the activities, or what objectives you're focusing on. Cause you know, when you make the lesson plan, it's always good to know what you're trying to accomplish in each lesson. It's not just, okay, I'm going to teach this page. It's what are the students learning from this page? What are we trying to practice with each student, right? So let's look a little bit closer. So it shows the warm up activities, uh, what the key vocabulary, what key uh, expressions the students are going to be learning, as well as uh, what materials you'll need to prepare or that you will be using in the lesson. So kind of key things to focus on there. So that first box is your kind of main focus of the lesson. And then going into the warm up, you know, if you have your own personal warm up activities, you know, they, or if you don't, you know, this gives you an example of what you can do with the students, right? So then going into the book activities, it also previews, <clears throat> previews what the uh, script is for the audios that you'll be listening to throughout the lesson. So basically as much support as possible in there. Okay, so with the goals of Let's Smile, so we'll kind of look in the comparison of the other two titles. So what is Let's Smile focusing on? So if I'm comparing the, the other two series, Smart English, like I talked about, and you could tell from the kind of level, um, is just trying to be easy and fun, right? Get a standard course book, easy to learn, fun to learn, easy to remember, kind of very basic, trying to you know get the students the foundation and kind of build it up as they're going through the course book. And then hand in hand, uh, since it's something, one that was more recently developed, there was a lot of trends that had been kind of focused on throughout uh, the English, English sphere, right? So with hand in hand, we're trying to develop those skills in the students, global awareness. Uh, if you don't know what CLIL is, CLIL is the content learning. Okay, so content learning, taking other subjects in class and, you know, bringing them in to the English classroom. Okay? And then the 21st century skills. So 21st century skills, do you guys know what the 21st century skills are? So 21st century skills are the four C's. So do you, can you see? So is it suitable for adults? Um, mostly focused on the elementary level, but, you know, you can always adapt it to if you want to use it for adults. But when we developed it, we had it more um, for the uh, elementary level students or for like the beginning learners. Okay. So for the 21st century skills, creative, good creativity. That is one of them. Good. So we have three more. So there are four total. So Creativity. Collaboration, very good. That's two. So what do you do in your critical thinking? Good. And then while you're collaborating, if you're collaborating with the group, communication, very good. So those are the four, four Cs for the 21st century skill. So in hand in hand, kind of put a big focus on that as well. So with Let's Smile, again, we're kind of taking a combination of the two, right? Mm -hmm. So we're still doing some of these 21st century skills and these kind of trends, but we're trying to make it more uh, simple, right? We're trying to make it not as high level, but, you know, trying to connect it to the students that maybe hand in hand might have been too difficult for, right? And putting the main focus on linking things together. So linking and recycling. So what, what we mean by that is, you know, we're linking all of the lessons and the language and the key expressions that the students are learning within the book, trying to link them all together into, you know, into, into one, essentially, one language, right? And then linking the school subjects. So that kind of goes into the content learning, right? And then linking to the world. And linking to the world is a bit different. So in hand in hand, we do have global awareness, but linking to the world in... Um, and let's smile is a bit different, right? And let me kind of go into that. We'll go into that a little bit. 
So first, language targets and linking and recycling. So I talked about, you know, putting them all together, not leaving, you know, each lesson behind. So here, if you can obviously see on the left, these are the kind of target language and words that we're using from unit seven, eight, nine, until 11. And when I was a teacher, there was a lot of times the books that I used, students would say, learn animals, right? They would learn animals. So example here, just from what we have, unit seven, we'd learn animals in unit seven, but then the students would never kind of encounter the vocabulary or the sentences really, again, until maybe the main review. But what we're doing with our books is we're going unit by unit and still linking them together. So if you see this activity on the right, in the upper left part here, it says unit seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And that means we're taking targets from those units and reusing them here. So this would be in unit 11, we're still using you know, words in unit seven, nine, 10. So you can see here the bears and lions and go here. And then questions here, seven, eight, nine, 10, colors, numbers. So we're practicing who is she, what are they, how many? These are the kind of questions. So it's constantly building upon, building upon what the students have already learned, right? It's not a one and done type deal where the students learn what are they, they're lions, and then it's done. So, but here, you know, without using animals, you can ask the question, oh, what are they? But the students can instead substitute in a newer vocabulary word. They are watermelons, okay? Just like this. So that's what we mean by recycling and linking together, okay? So, and then it still goes in with the, you know, practicing the listen and speaking, listen and answer. So we're kind of what I alluded to in a, a second ago, taking the other questions and then adding in the newer vocabulary, mixing and matching, essentially. So they're, so they won't be relearning it, they're just practicing it, but then changing the context a little bit on what they're learning, okay? So that's one. And then language targets are linked to school subjects. So here in student book two, unit six on the playground. So they're learning about shapes, okay? So shapes on the playground. So kind of looking at things that the students might see every day and then kind of linking it into the you know, English class, right? And then with shapes, we usually, you know, geometry and uh, geometry, yeah, geometry and uh, getting all the shapes in there. Here we have science, okay, animal eyes at night. So bringing in the animals and, you know, how their eyes are different. So just kind of bringing in different things. So with the language targets, we branch out into different subjects, but bring it into the English class. Okay? And then language targets are linked to the world. So here, global awareness, we had with hand in hand. But when we look at Let's Smile, we're looking at, when we say world, we're talking about the immediate world of the students, okay? So if you see it's the circle slowly expanding out, you know, this is kind of the different levels of the students' kind of reality of their world. So starting with the small one, we're looking at their house, looking at their family, what they see, you know, every day, like basically, and then branching out to their bigger sphere of the neighborhood or the community. So as they're walking home, what do they see? And then state, nation, culture, you know, what do they see? You know, kind of looking deeper into these first two and then looking at, you know, the wider, wider, and keeps going bigger, essentially. So that's what we're trying to do here. So looking at different, you know, settings that the students are, are used to and kind of building off of that, right? So hand in hand, just looks at the global world, looking at cultures from other countries and everything. Let's smile, kind of focusing in on their immediate, you know, immediate world. Okay, so that's kind of the definition there. So examples here, so looking at the world links. So things that they might see at home, computers, phones, kind of building it that way. Fun at the park. So now we're expanding out, it's going out of a room and into the world. What do they see at the park? What do we do at the park? Okay. And then playgrounds as well, kind of, you know, slowly building out. So this is um, what I'm talking about. 
So it's not necessarily you know, other countries. You know, we could still include other countries, like I showed on that diagram, but we're looking on slowly expanding out the world, and that's kind of um, doing too much uh, immediately. Okay. So let's get into the lesson flow. This will be pretty quick, how the lessons will be run. So looking at lesson 12 or unit 12, good jobs. So the first page obviously will be the introduction. Um, shows the topic, what the students will be learning, uh, topic and words. And then the second page, words and grammar. So kind of introducing the language and then practicing it. Obviously, it's the kind of... Uh, natural progression here. So got the words and grammar practice and then going into a chant. So here we're introducing the language. And then as we finish these two, we go into a story, right? So we're putting, we're getting all these uh, practices of words and sentences and putting it into a, into a context, into a story. So we have the animation here, the teacher and everything. So we're learning jobs now practicing these key expressions, these key vocabulary targets within context to give the students an idea of oh, when, you know, when we're students, we always think about, oh, when will we use this? When are we going to use this? So these would be the situations, you know, putting it into context of when you'll use the language, right? So then more practice, you know, singing practice, getting the practicing fluency, and then spin an answer. So a little short activity that you can do with the students as well. Okay. And then we go into more. So with Let's Smile, the kind of content learning is within the unit as opposed to in hand in hand for those that know about hand in hand, we use the content learning in the kind of review. So each lesson has its own focused content learning page, essentially, our lesson. So in this one, we have social studies. So we're looking at the different tools for, for different jobs, kind of linking those together. And then we have the kind of link, basically. So each unit will have this link that I kind of showed from a different lesson. So here in lesson 12, so lesson unit 12 is the end of the book for book one. So we're still going back to unit 8, 10, and 11 and going over those and still practicing the vocabulary as well as listening to answers. So still reusing everything, okay? So once we finish that, you know, every few lessons, every two lessons, uh, there's a world link. So here after uh, the jobs and everything, we have the animals and families. So kind of bringing everything together here on the world link, okay? All right, so. Yeah, so here's a preview of kind of the table of contents. So every two lessons, like I said, we'll have the world link. Okay, and it also lets you know what you know, clear subject you're going to be bringing in to each lesson, each unit. Right? So today we're going to, like I mentioned already, go into good jobs. So we'll be doing uh, unit 12 for the model lesson today. Okay, make sure my time, good. Making good time. So before we get into a model lesson, I do see a question in the Q&A. Is this book one? Yes. So what I was previewing there was book one. So uh, lesson 12, book one. So yeah, I'll, I can show some images. Uh, so I'll be going into the model lesson. So I'll be showing our ebook. Okay. So I can show some, if you want to see some samples from the other levels, I can go ahead and do that as well. Okay. Um, hopefully, probably at the end, I want to get through the model lesson. And then if you're still curious what the uh, higher levels look like and what kind of target language there are, you can kind of take a look. All right. So model lesson. Okay. So like I talked about first, the first page always, we have the introduction, right? We have the introduction. So when you're starting a lesson, so I'm going to throw a question out to you guys. How do you usually start a new lesson? What do you usually do the first time? What, what kind of techniques do you guys use to start your, your lesson? Do you just go in, open the book, 
It's like, okay, class, this is what we're doing today. Talk about the topic, okay? Talk about the main picture. Picture walk, Q&A, perfect. Warm up, good. So for, what do you do for the warm up? I see it's ask questions about the main picture, good. I'm, I'm liking what I, I'm seeing here. So it's always good, you know, especially when, when teachers don't know how to get the students engaged, right? Get, get engaged with the lesson. So how, how do we pull them into the book and what they're learning, right? So getting the students involved. So guess the job, have the highest salary in their language. Very good. Uh, those are some, that's a, that's a good, uh, good start, good warm up activity as well, very easy. So I usually, you know, have the students, have a student read, read the title. And then like you guys have already said, talk about the picture. What do you think we're going to be learning about? So ask them that question. So it's good job. So this one's a pretty straightforward and obvious, right? So they can answer, oh, we're going to learn about jobs. And when you ask these questions, a lot of times, you know, do you, how many teachers have an English only classroom? curious. I know some do and some don't, some a little bit. Yeah, some English only classrooms. Okay. Yeah. So when necessary, I would, unless it's kind of enforced by the, by the, the higher ups or anything, um, for certain situations, I think it would be okay for them to use their you know, L1 is the term, their, their native language. So here in the beginning, you know, when I introduce the language, introduce the lesson or unit to my students, I have them read the title and then I'd ask that question, what do you think we're going to learn? And if the students, you know, if they can't say it in English, even though it's in the title for here, just imagine it's a different, different title. Um, they would, you know, speak, I would allow them to, you know, in Korean, they, they can tell me, oh, this is what, okay. But what the important part is, so when they do speak their, the, speak using their native language, answer them in English, okay? So it, you don't have to answer them again in, you know, in their native language. So if they say, oh, you know, so jobs, and Jiko, now we're going to learn about jobs. So then, oh, yeah, jobs, good. And then answer them, you know jobs that's what we're going to learn and as you're going through each of the pictures you know oh this is a doctor this is a book i see you know what do you see in the image picture walk get them engaged in and kind of invested into the, the uh into the picture right so next question here for you guys how many do you pre-teach pre-teach vocabulary do you pre-teach vocabulary so like at the very start, so before, say, even before looking at these, uh, these things, do you, do you pre-teach vocabulary? Yes, good, Cecile. Yes, we do. Perfect. Great. It's a very good practice to do. You don't have to, while you're going through, going through the things, right? So, so new vocabulary. So we're going to go over our vocabulary today. So you're all my students. So what I used to do, again, we're to, if you're thinking about engagement, trying to pull the students into, into, the, into the book. So oftentimes teachers, you know, you get your flashcards. Uh, if you're not using like technology or anything, you can get your flashcards and, you know, you show your flashcards and, okay, what's this? So if you want some samples of the flashcards, what do you think this is? You know, what, what is it? It's, so this is level five. So this might be a bit more difficult. It's take care of animals. Right. Actually, let me pause here, put my bigger picture. So usually a lot of times teachers will get their flashcards. So what do you think this is? This is, any guesses in chat? So it's level five, so it's a little bit different. So these are kind of different levels, but this one is write stories, right? Do homework. So you can get the students guess. And in, in guessing, it gets the students engaged as well. So... There's many different ways. So there's you can do you can do uh, flashcards. Uh, I used PowerPoint a lot when I did it. 
So I always liked using images and stuff. So you can use the flashcards, but I also liked using, you know, animated GIFs with here. So we're, we're talking about jobs, okay? So we have, what job is this? What is this? What is it? So you are my students. What job is it? A cook, good cook, chef. So you can teach them there's two, there's two words that you could use. But in our book, we're using cook, but chef would be okay as well. And then as you're going through it, who can cook? Are you good? Are you good cooks? Any chefs in the chef? Are you good? What can you cook? What is the, what is the best best food that you can cook? Fried egg. <laughs> When I would ask this question, my students always egg or ramen or you know, something easy, toast, sandwich. Oh, adobo. Adobo is good. Instant noodles. Uh, there's a lot of noodles in the chat. Nothing like boiling water and putting some instant noodles. Oh, pozole, sinigang. Oh, we have some Filipinos here. I'm, my family is also Filipino, so you guys are making me miss Filipino food. I don't get to eat as often. Cooking rice. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it's a cook. So, and then you can go further. What, you know, famous, what famous cooks do you know? Yesterday I was watching some Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> they added some new season on Netflix. So who's the famous cook on Hell's Kitchen? You guys know? He always yells at everybody. Very, very rarely seems happy. Uncle Roger. <laughs> Uncle Roger I've heard before. He got very viral recently. <laughs> I think it, what was it? It was uh, the lady that made, was it fried rice? Was it fried rice? I think I remember that video recently. I was referring to Gordon Ramsay. Very good. Gordon Ramsay. It's a lot of famous chefs. There's um, Jamie Oliver's my favorite. There's also the, I don't know how many years it's been, but uh, salt Bay was the chef that would always sprinkle the uh, the salt like this. Also famous famous chef and cook now. Okay, so repeat after the students. You know, cook, cook. Okay. So then we're going to our next one. What is this? Hint: the word is in the picture. This is a doctor. Very good, doctor. Okay, and then just kind of simple questions. Where do doctors work? They work in a hospital. So maybe in previous lesson, they learned hospital. So you can kind of review that. Yeah. If there's favorite, famous doctors they might know. I think uh, Martin Luther King was a doctor, I believe. He received his uh, doctorate. Dr. Pepper, maybe. It's a soft train, little joke. Okay. So the next one here, we have what everyone else, all your students, we have students, right? Student. So I don't know if there's many famous students. I think a lot of, uh, most of the time, a lot of the famous kind of millionaires, a lot of them dropped out of college, actually. <laughs> so it's one thing. So student, go over that. And then the last one here is teacher, teacher. Okay, so we'll repeat after that, teacher. Obviously, who's your favorite teacher? And then I would get really upset if they didn't say me, right? Give them homework at the end of the, the class. They didn't say the English teacher. So yeah, get them yeah. engage with the students a bit. Have fun. I always like joking around my students. All right, so a teacher. So with this, I like, I like to try to get the students to look at the screen. So if I'm using these kind of animated things, just Google, you know, funny teacher GIF. And then these, that's basically how I found all these. You just kind of put them in the presentation. You know, gets the students, you know, especially if you're teaching online still. Uh, you're teaching online and the students are staring at screens for, you know, hours upon day, uh, like every day. So we try to make it 
I always think about it, making the screen worth looking at, right? If they're enjoying looking at what, they're, what they see on screen, okay? So this is how I'll kind of pre-teach the vocabulary. So before I even get into kind of the lessons or everything, go over the title and then, okay, these are the words that you're going to see. So even though, so if I were to show you the lesson plan again, it would tell you these four words, right? What I would do as a teacher, make sure to go through the unit, preview the unit, look at the stories, look at the chants, look at any of the activities that you see in the book. And if you see any words that you think the student might not know, add them into the pre-teaching vocabulary, right? So you can do that. So when it comes to it later, when they're reading the story, maybe they don't fully understand the story because there's a word that's not a vocabulary word that they might not know, okay? So there's that. Okay, so after pre-teaching vocabulary, not games and activities, we're going to go into our book, okay? So I'm going to go on to eSmart Class, which is what I mentioned earlier. So let me reshare my screen with you guys. So go over, this is my login. Luckily, you can't see my password. You can try to guess it, but oh, I don't even know my password. It is because I put my wrong ID. So it's Gary Teacher, not Teacher Gary. So then you go here, you see everything. You see all the books from eFuture. So a lot of practice. So you can go in and do a practice with the students. So eSmart class. So you can see here, you can see hand in hand. And then you see let's smile. So we can go in, we could. We could do all these practices as well in addition, but I want to mainly go into the ebooks. So here, and let's go into Let's Smile. And if you are going to teach with eSmart class, whenever a new window opens up, or this is just in general, whenever a new oh, it, when window opens up, oh, tongue tied, window opens up, make sure to reshare. Okay. So then we're going in. Let's go to unit twelve. So. Going in here, looking at the page, go, go do your picture walk using this. And then we have the audio included. So go in and do more listen and repeat, right? So even though we pre-taught the language, this is kind of the drilling, right? Go in and practice with the audio instead of teacher, save your voice a little bit, right? So you go in here, kind of do that. Listen and repeat, listen and point. Um, if you have a big screen or everything, you can have a student, students, you know, point out which which one they're looking at, kind of review it there. So we can uh, point to the teacher, point to the cook, point to the chef. Yeah, we can do it that way. Then we go into, of course, more practice. So we do have some game, like a game here. You have the flashcards integrated as well into the book, and then kind of having them listen and write down the correct number. So if we're going to do the game here, so Every unit, we have kind of a matching game that we can do. So let's see. Let's see with you guys who can, uh, who can get a correct match. So I want you to give me two numbers. So go ahead and write in the chat, and I'll, I'll click the pictures for, for the numbers that you give me. So let me see how, who can get a match here. One and four, Rika. One and four. So number one, teacher. Four, cook. No. Betsy, seven and ten. Seven, students, ten. Doctor, no. Cecile, two and seven. Cook, student, no. Ursula, one and five. Teacher, doctor, no. One and nine. Teacher, students, no. Two and four. Cook, cook. Cook, very good. Good memory game. Five and ten. Another one. No. So we have to find the picture and the word. So not matching the, the words together. So three and seven. Student. I believe doctor. So, so we saw a student here. Student. So I'm trying to speed run it. Student. Oh, look at that. Perfect. So that was the picture. Nope. Oh, the doctor was doctor. here. Doctor. 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 
And then good job, everyone. It took us 30 clicks <laughs> to find all the cards. Okay. So you can do it again, get into a little bit of a challenge so you could reset and then they would all be different, right? So you do it that way. So that's a game integrated into the ebook as well that you can do. And then listen, listen, point, and repeat. So again, more speaking practice. So we're getting it a lot, um, a lot of speaking practice in the beginning, making sure the students understand, understand the targets, understand the sentences that they're going to be using. So as well, you can look at it if you want to talk about the grammar with the students. You know, is she a student? Are they students? This is the key sentences that they're going to be using. And then with the younger students, doing song and chants, even though, even though they might hate it, right? A lot of students, oh, I don't want to sing, teacher. I don't want to do this, do that. A lot of times, even if you just play it, if, if, you know, if, the, if the song is catchy, sometimes you can get the students to unconsciously sing the song. So what I taught, even though you know, some of the songs they didn't like, I would be walking through the halls and I would hear some students uh, singing the song, you know, that they learned, right? So just kind of getting that infectious song. So I'll preview a little bit here, the song of this lesson unit. Yes, she is. Is she a teacher? No, she isn't. No, she isn't. So you can play that through and get the students to kind of, even if they just listen, or you can, if you have some kind of a point system as well, like some of my co teachers did, you can kind of encourage the students to try to participate. So just getting the students, again, practicing uh, the fluency. So kind of going through each each part of the, the lesson here. So I always like doing role plays for the stories. So getting the students to practice and then you know, watching the video, getting, getting the students into groups and they each pick a part and, and do it that way. And then they present at the end. Um, you know, anything to get them to practice the language. So we also have the videos and animations included here. So now they can do these. Oh, is he a teacher? So with watching the video, if the students want to copy what's happening in the video as well, you can kind of give them a bonus and kind of vote who is the best, uh, best group to role play and everything. The students kind of get into it and have fun with it. And then, of course, more practice, read and say, listen and sing some more songs, and then an activity again here. So the students would get the arrow or kind of a paper clip, and they can spin it on there and practice the question and answer, right? And then going into the CLIL activity. So again, there's some new words here. So the students, you know, you'll probably spend some time listening and repeating. Uh, if you taught these words again in the beginning when you pre-taught, probably just need a, a little bit of time to review. So a stethoscope might be a bit difficult that you might have to, depending on the language, of course, you know, some, some phonics targets might be a bit more difficult to, to pronunciate or enunciate in as well. And then kind of going in and listen and point to the correct one here. And then the unit link, kind of just going through, because the, the book activities and everything, pretty straightforward, right? Um, if you know, look at the lesson plan, this is what you're going to be doing for each section. Uh, obviously, it's kind of more difficult to do these uh, when you guys can't speak back to me, you know, drill and everything. And I don't want to spend too much time with kind of the obvious of drilling and, and practicing the listening. So we have the, the mixing and matching here. So you can use some of the, the tools and, and do it this way. So if you're on Zoom, the annotate function, very good tool that you can use. So you can, the uh, eBooks also have a drawing tool, but then you can match Match it here with the students, do it that way. Okay. Erase the drawings. And then they'll look at and listen and answer. So we can play the audio. 
So if we're looking at A1, so we're looking at the picture in, in A and looking at number one, okay? So then we have this question here. One, look at A, number one. Is she a teacher? Good answer. So is she a teacher? Is she a teacher? No. No, she isn't. Good. What is she? She's a doctor. She's a doctor. And then you kind of go through uh, each of these, each of these uh, kind of links together, right? So that's the, the ebook here. And then as we get finished through there, then we have the kind of world link. So just want to preview the world link with you guys. So listen a number, point and say. So kind of practicing here. And then looking at the kind of new words as well. Oops, no, it was already on the bottom there. So a calf, a cub, a fawn, kitten, and puppy. So these are all kind of babies, or kind of babies of each animal. So which one is a fawn? So C, fawn. What animal baby, like baby animal is a fawn? A deer, very good. So let me write in the letter here, C. C is a fawn, okay. All that. Then draw a family animal. So look and write. So then they practice writing the words, these cute animals. And then if they have a, you know, a pet, you draw it in there as well. Okay. Check my time. Okay. So we'll get through here. So that's the ebook and everything. Of, you know, pretty straightforward. What you're going, how you're going to be teaching through there. You know, you have all your all the components and all of the uh, materials that you need in the book, the audio and everything included. So you can kind of go through there. And then usually you'll have time at the end for some games and activities. So I'll put some together for you guys and hopefully you can use them with your students as well. So this one on your head, uh, I wouldn't, this would be say a game, you could use that as a warm up, uh, but not in the first lesson of a unit. Right. So this one here, you get those flashcards, get a volunteer, and the student would just put the flashcard on their head. Okay. And the student has to guess what is above their head, right? So they would ask, you know, is it, you know, is, if we were doing the the jobs. So you easily could do it do the jobs and oh, is is it a doctor? See a doctor, see a teacher, and kind of go over and the students would ask and answer. Yes or no. So yes, it is. No, it isn't. Okay, kind of do it that way. So if we we're doing this in person, you know, I would pull pull some volunteers up here, and then we we do it. Right? Kind of hard to make it that way. So that's one. And then we have a spelling relay. Okay, so kind of split the, the students in groups, and then they come to the board. So a student write down the letter, and then the student comes out and writes the second letter. So kind of getting students to practice, you know, spelling, essentially. A lot of my students, I taught a lot of fifth and sixth, and still spelling is, you know, going to be difficult for them. So you can get the students to kind of do a warm-up this way. So especially with words like stethoscope and, you know, tractor or trailer and everything, get them to practice it and see. So spelling relays, you can do this instead of doing normal spelling tests, right? Do it in as an activity instead of a test that kind of stresses students out, right? Okay. Uh, this activity I do, it's one of my favorites. I owe in, well, almost, I think, every one of my presentations, if you've seen my previous presentations, I talk about this activity. I think pair share, I just can't recommend it enough. Um, I'll, demo, I'll demo think pair share with you guys. Uh, so you'll give a student a worksheet or a task. So it's very, you can adapt it a lot to different ways. Um, you can do standard ones and um, kind of other kinds. I'll, I'll show you basically what you can do. And then students will take one answer or take one answer, one minute to answer uh, the task or the questions or worksheet that you have by themselves. Okay. And then after another minute, the student will work with a partner 
and they'll work together and answer more. So then after that minute, the class will come together and answer everything or kind of give their answers for everything. So normal and other times, so you would take a picture. So this is like the easiest way to do it. So you give them a picture. Okay. I'll give you one minute, write down everything you see in this picture. Okay. So then the students would write it down one minute. And then after one minute, come with a partner. Okay. Now with your partner, look at this picture and tell me what you do. Write down what do you see. And then as a class, come together and then I'll talk about it. Right. So a variation that you can do. So I'm going to give them, have my timer here. So utilizing the native language, right? The L1. So I have, so for those that aren't Korean, I did see some Korean teachers on the list. So maybe you can, hopefully the, the teachers, you know, you don't, uh, <laughs> don't give hints yet. I want to teach Korean to some, some of these uh, new teachers here. So we have different words here. These are different jobs in Korean, right? These are different jobs. So you would give, give this sheet. So the English side is empty. So I would give this, this uh, worksheet to my students. Okay, in one minute or 20 seconds or however many lo how long you want to give them, write down the words that you know in English. Okay. So obviously you guys don't know Korean, <laughs> but can you guess what possible answers there are? What, what do you think, what jobs do you think I included here? So obviously there's more than four. So I had, you know, we had the four from here. So doctor. So doctor, which one do you think is doctor? Yeah, this is guess, Cecile. <laughs> Just guessing here. So maybe you'll learn some, uh, some ones. Five, four. So doctor is actually number one. Good, <laughs> good. So doctor, so let me click here. So this one is doctor. So then how we say this, Lisa is doctor. This is doctor, right? So then teacher, number two is teacher. Very good. Number two is teacher. Very good. So this is something name is teacher. Okay. Chef, chef and cook. Oh, number three is student. Are you, did you put up your phone to like translate? You know, or have you learned, uh, learned some Korean before as well? Haksang. Haksang is a student. Very good. Four is nurse. So we have our, our Korean teacher here. Four is nurse. Kanosa. So here's one thing I, try, I tried to include here as well. So we have Lisa here. And you can also see again, Lisa is here. So you can guess this is some kind of doctor. But what kind of doctor? A vet is a good guess. Oh. No. It's not vet though. Dental doctor, a dental doctor, a dentist. Very good. Chika is, is the uh, dentist. Okay. Click here. A pediatrician was a good guess. Undong Sansu. Undong means exercise, and Sansu is player. So this is an athlete. Someone said cook and chef. So Yori means cook. Yori Sa is a cook or chef. Okay. Beu is an actor, our actress, and then Kisurja is an engineer. Okay, so if you're for those that have watched Squid Game, maybe, <laughs> and uh, learned some listening to some Korean, if you didn't listen to it dubbed, here's some Korean Korean words that you could learn. So jobs in Korean. So if you're speaking in Spanish or Vietnamese or anything, your language, you can make a list, you know, especially depending on the level of your students. So in the lesson, we had four jobs, right? We only had four jobs, but that doesn't, that, can't, that doesn't mean that you have to stop at the four jobs, right? You can still teach them more jobs. So you can still do it this way, even though our main vocabulary words were doctor, teacher, student, chef. If you expand it out, okay, if you, the student was curious about nurse, like, oh, my mom, you know, my mom's job is a nurse or my dad's an you know, an actor <laughs> or something, right? Or my mom's a doctor, okay? So you can kind of go through and do it that way and you can expand the, the vocabulary for the students, okay? So that's Think Pressure. 
So you can set timers as well. Um, let me go back. So yeah, it kind of slowly goes down. You can do a lot of animations with objects and everything. So this could be your, your pseudo timer. So this is like the one minute. So you can, if you're doing it online, you can do it that way. Okay. Uh, guess and write. So this one here, you know, you get your flashcards, put them in a bag. And it's kind of like a telepathy in a sense. Uh, draw a flashcard from the bag. Don't show it to the students. The students have to guess. So kind of another guessing game. So if I had my timer here. So we're, we have jobs, right? So uh, when I start my timer, I believe this is 20 seconds. I want you to guess what job I'm, I picked, okay? So we'll start in three, two, one. Whoops. <laughs> I had already started the timer. So what is it? Teacher's mistake. Hopefully that was me. It says teacher. Raina, you're so smart. Wonderful job. Betsy too. Teacher, very good. Wonderful spelling. You guys paid attention in class, learned the, the vocabulary very well. It's a teacher. Very good. Teacher. Perfect. Okay. They can do it that way. Pictionary, let me see if my time. So Pictionary, kind of the standard one as well, using the vocabulary. So, you know, if we're looking at tractor, stethoscope, board, and pot. So you want me to demonstrate this one? So if we're doing online, so in Zoom, if you don't know, there is a whiteboard. So I'm going to share this whiteboard with you. I'm going to try to attempt to draw something and you guys have to guess what it is, okay? But I want full sentence, okay? I want a full sentence, not just doctor or elephant or just the word. I want you to say it is, okay? It is a or it is un, so on, okay? So let's try to draw something. Hold on, let me change the color because I'm drawing using white ink on a white whiteboard. Okay, so let's see. I'm using my finger on a touchpad, so I'm not uh, a wonderful artist. So you have to bear with me. Oh, geez, this is very bad. <laughs> Stethoscope? No, it isn't. Oh. Car? A tractor. Very good. <laughs> it's a tractor. So then you can go together. What is it? It's a tractor, right? I tried to trick you with the black circle with the stethoscope. I, I succeeded in someone saying stethoscope. Very good. It's a tractor. So you can go through and do that. Uh, if you want a wider amount of words, I would use uh, I would use this kind of game for review after a few lessons. So you can, or even in unit link. That's like the, one of the perfect uh, opportunities to use it. If you're teaching a unit link, you can take the flashcards, take the words from all those units, and then boom, perfect. You, you have more kind of, uh, you won't be reusing words, uh, the same words too often, right? So that would be a way to do that. So if you're teaching online, you can give the students the opportunity to write. Uh, be careful with that because, you know, the students will be writing on the screen uh, throughout the whole whole lesson, right? So that's that's Pictionary, okay? So yeah, so let's play what we're gonna do. Um, another variation. This will probably more so work in in class because uh, it's hard to hard to kind of uh, kind of do it, you know, online. There's no real way. So I, I did this with my students called Line Pictionary. So basically I had different groups. They're, they're, all my students were already in kind of rows. So what I would do is I would give the students 
the first student in the front, they would get a piece of paper. Okay? And, you know, and then all the other students, so if there was five students, student one would have their paper. Two, three, and four would be, their head would be down. Okay? So it would be, their head would be down. Student number five in the back is facing away. So they're looking at the back of the room. So when we would start, I would show the students, say I'd show them a card. Okay, this is what you're going to draw. We're drawing, take care of animals. So I'd give 10 seconds, very quick, 10 seconds to the first student. This first student starts drawing on their paper, 10 seconds. I would say time, they would pass the paper to student two. So student two, they would put their head up, grab the paper, they would see what they're drawing, and then they would continue from what student number one was drawing, and they would keep going. And then student number three, and then student number four would draw. When it gets to student number five, of course, you know, they can't turn around, but they would put their hand out, they would receive the paper, they'd look at it. And then they have to guess. They'd have to guess the answer. So if you're doing a speed game, um, you know, the first student to raise their hand, or if you're just doing, you know, the student just has to write down the answer. You could do it that way. But uh, yeah, the last student guesses and gets very chaotic, especially if you're doing a speed game where only one group gets a point. And then kind of since they're already in a row, it's easy to take turns, right? So then student number five goes to student number one. One, two, two, three, three, four, four, five. So each student gets a, a chance at drawing and gets a chance at guessing. So obviously I can't demo this with you guys, unfortunately, in person. I would love to demo this with you guys, but uh, I think your students would have fun. It can get a little wild depending on how you reward points. So the students will, you know, whenever a student at the end doesn't give the correct answer, no, no, no. And, but make sure, you know, they don't give hints. Yeah, the drawing relay, you can do it. Um, if you want to play this game on Zoom. Oh, if you want to play it on Zoom. I would, uh, I'm trying to think off the top here, how to do this on Zoom. Probably have to utilize utilize um, utilize breakout rooms. Utilizing breakout rooms would probably be the easiest way to do it. So all the guessers would be in one room. And then, you know, you could, I think you were, you're able to pull students into certain rooms. So then the students would kind of take turns drawing. And then the students in the, you know, the guessing room would come in later. So that would be the closest way I can think of doing this online. Um, instead of, instead of uh, one by one, just like all the students together, like the group, you put them all in groups and then all together they try to try, try to draw it. So you give them, say, if, if three students are trying to draw it together, you give them, you know, four minutes or something if they're using the online tool. And then after th two minutes or so, you pull the guessers in and then they have to guess. That would be kind of the way. Or... Uh, yeah, there's, there's many different ways. Um, no, all the students that are drawing knows the answer. The only student that doesn't know the answer is the student guessing. So when student one puts their head up and starts drawing, you're still showing them what the answer is. So they know what to continue drawing. Okay. Okay, and then I believe this is my last activity, categories. Um, you can do this online as well. Uh, there's some kind of uh, online tools that you can use. Um, you can do this again uh, in breakout rooms. You can put the students all on breakout rooms and then bring them back together. A lot of logistics with that, but you can use um, this game. So basically getting categories. So this is a good review game as well, since there's multiple categories. If the students learned animals, learned colors, jobs, countries, um, you can do it this way, uh, how to play this game. You'll give the students the categories, and then you'll give them a letter, okay? So here we have the letter A. And then the students must think of words that start with that letter for each category, okay? So obviously in breakout rooms, the students would all go in there, and then they would all create, you know, pick their own, the words for them. So... Can you guys think of an animal that starts with A? Ant. 
Mm, what else? Alligator. Very good. So you guys wrote down alligator. I also wrote down alligator. So since we said the same thing, we don't get a point, <laughs> right? So the point of this one is to be able to write the different, um, be able to write different words uh, with each group, each group writing different words. Yeah? So countries, America, and they can be really tricky, right? Especially with, especially with colors. So if you want to make sure that, you know, one group, make sure that it won't be a tie, do like the letter B with colors. More than likely, we have blue, brown, and black. So that's three. If you have like five groups, more than likely, someone's going to be able to <laughs> write the same one. So it's kind of a, a little guessing game as well within each group. Okay? Um, so I also have the word stop the bus here, or the title. Uh, stop the bus basically is the speed version of it. So the first group that writes down a word for each of these categories, they say stop the bus and then they read the answers. Okay. So then going with the animals and families. So these are the kinds of projects that you can do. Um, so we're looking at animals here. You can do like a zoo project or obviously it's a bit difficult. Um, this would be more in class, but you can do kind of paper projects. So making like brochures. I'll very quickly show, go back here. So one thing that I've done, so the website Canva, so I have a free, free account. So in previous ones, I showed, I did like a menu, so a simple menu project. So these are my favorite foods and this is how much and then what kinds. So students can come here with free account and kind of make, make different, uh, things but depending on what you're doing then you can animate certain things put animations on there displaying them so these can be the projects online that they can use and then send to you right that you can do with your students so there's a lot of free resources um, that you can find online for for these types of things that you want to do uh, i'm sure you can find something so making posters flyers brochures kind of simple things and then basically to wrap up here, let's smile. These were kind of the main things, um, the main, main things for let's smile. Everything is linked and all that, um, you know, school subjects to the world and recycling. So we're going to be wrapping up here. <clears throat> so these are the main kind of places if you want more information about eFuture, about our books, uh, eSmart class, you can look at our website. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we post a lot of, you know, me and my colleagues are making a lot of videos and resources for you guys, trying to help you throughout the pandemic. Um, be sure to do that. Um, YouTube, we will be uploading this as well onto the YouTube. So be sure to subscribe and uh, get notifications when we do. We've been very quick with our turnarounds with uploading our, our videos. So I'm sure my webinar will be up in a few days. Okay, so thank you guys again and see you next month. Bye-bye.